Hello everyone. We have concluded the theory part of our fibroid uterus topic, leomyomas, myomas, fibroids. And now I am proceeding with the question answer session. Today I will be covering multiple choice questions which you are having in your uh, pre-PG exams or other exams which entrance exams, how to proceed with a multiple choice question, how to decode what the examiner wants to ask and a case presentation in your practical examinations. So starting up with my first question, a 23 year old para 1 live 1 has intramural fibroid in uterus. Her uterus is palpable till umbilicus. She has a feeling of heaviness in lower abdomen. Her menses are regular and normal. What should be the best treatment in this case? Now the key points, whenever you start reading a question, what do you observe? 23 year old, she is a young patient. Para 1, live 1, she is not a case of infertility. Uterus palpable till umbilicus, what does that mean? It is a mass, right? This is the umbilicus, this is your symphysis pubis. If the mass is like this, that means it is a huge mass. Huge mass, that means it is more than 12 weeks. So, I hope you remember our management guidelines. Any mass which is more than 12 weeks pregnant size uterus, we need to operate it. But because she is a young patient, we cannot go for a hysterectomy. Now, she has a feeling of heaviness, we know, because she is having a big mass. Menses. Now, what about menses? As we remember our symptoms, fibroid uterus 75 percent cases are asymptomatic. In symptoms, most common symptoms are menstrual disturbances, heavy bleeding PV, painful bleeding PV. By God's grace, the menses are normal. That means there is no problem with the menstrual function, there is no anemia, there is no life threatening condition. So what should be the management? Now see, we cannot go for expectant management ruled out. Why? Because the mass is more than 12 weeks, we need to do something. GnRH analogs. What are the indications of GnRH analogs? I hope you remember that GnR, GnRH analogs are a part of medical management. Medical management we cannot give for long time. We are giving medical management when we are preparing the patient for surgery. So GnRH analogs have no role. Moreover, she has no problem with the menses. So right now giving GnRH analog will not solve your purpose. Myomectomy. Remove the fibroid, leave a functioning uterus behind. She is a young patient, you cannot remove the uterus. She, the family is not complete, para 1, live 1. So, the answer of choice is myomectomy. This way, we can approach a patient and form our answer. Next question. A 45-year-old woman, 45-year-old woman, presented with heavy irregular bleeding for last 6 months. Her pregnancy test negative and the following is the USG image. What is the diagnosis? USG that means ultrasound, sonogram, sonography. This is the image. Now I have put this question to tell you how to read a sonography image, right? Sonography is everything about echogenicity isoechoic, hypoechoic, hyperechoic and blood supply. Very beautifully, they have given you the blood supply. In color images, you will find blood supply, otherwise not. So, this thing is always your probe. The probe which is actually seeing the lesion inside. Last time also I told, this black and white contour, this is basically the uterus. You are viewing your uterus in a longitudinal plane. If you cut the uterus out in a longitudinal plane, you will find this section of the sonography. So, this is the outer contour. So, there is no problem with the outer contour. It is smooth, right? Now, this black thing, gray black thing is the myometrium. And as you see, there is no world appearance, no mass, no lesion inside this myometrium. So, myometrium is free of any pathology. Now comes the central portion, which is your endometrium, right? This white, white thing. Normally, 
in a normal proliferative phase endometrium, it gives you a triple line appearance this way. A normal endometrium looks like this, but this is not looking like this. There is some problem with the endometrium. Now, they have also given you the feeding vessel, right? So, a normal outline, normal myometrium, problematic endometrium and a feeding vessel. There is something inside the endometrium. Now, what it could be? Since it is not a SIS, it is not a saline infusion sonography, so you cannot differentiate between a submucous fibroid or endometrial polyp. But the point to be noted here that there is no specific rounded structure with a world appearance. A submucous fibroid will look like this thing, but there is no specific contour inside the endometrium. So, most probably it is endometrial polyp. Submucous fibroid ruled out. Endometrial polyp, yes. Adenomyosis ruled out. Endometrial cancer ruled out. So, the answer is endometrial polyp. Now, the question arises, how do we diagnose adenomyosis? In sonography, the myometrium will be thickened. Thick myometrium with hyperechoic lesions with posterior enhancement. What does that mean? I will be covering this in my lectures in the coming classes, but adenomyosis is the presence of functioning endometrium inside the myometrium. So, the myometrium increases in size and it becomes hyperechoic. So, in cases of adenomyosis, you will not find such nice myometrium. It will be a thickened structure. So, no adenomyosis. How will we differentiate from endometrial cancer? In endometrial cancer, this delineation, this endometrium and myometrium delineation is lost because it is a cancer. So, endometrium and myometrium, there is some smudging over there. There is no specific line of delineation. Then we can stamp it as endometrial cancer number one point and number two endometrial cancer has hyperplasia first and then it gets converted into cancer. So, the endometrium is thickened, highly thickened. This way, if the examiner is giving you a sonography slide, we should not be afraid. First of all, locate the probe, locate the line of the uterus, then locate the myometrium and proceed to the endometrium and then you have the answer in your hand. Now, the third question. A 25 year old woman presents with inability to conceive for 3 years. Young patient inability to conceive, she is suffering from infertility. On evaluation, she has a 3 centimeter intramural fibroid and the HSG hysterosalpingography shows bilateral patent tubes, point number 1 and semen analysis is normal. So, what should be your management? At this point of time, you should remember the pathology, why a fibroid causes infertility. So, if this is the uterus like this and these are your fallopian tubes. So, if there is a coronal block because of the fibroid or it is a huge fibroid causing indentation on the endometrium, then only it can cause infertility otherwise it cannot. So, this is a small fibroid and the tubes are bilaterally patent and the semen analysis is normal. So, look for some other cause of infertility. This fibroid is mostly not causing any problem. So, if there is infertility and there is fibroid, do not just pounce upon surgery. Surgery is not the answer to every question. So, here expectant management, yes, look for other things. Look why there is infertility. Try to correct it first. Myomectomy, no. GnRH agonist, absolutely no. We do not want to create amenorrhea. All GnRH analogs sooner or later create pseudomenopause. We want this patient to conceive. We cannot give GnRH agonist. And OCP is a big no-no. So, both medical managements are ruled out because this is a case of infertility and we are not planning any surgery. 
and myomectomy is ruled out because of bilateral patent tubes. This way the answer comes out to be expectant management. So I hope I am making myself clear that whenever you are approaching a clinical case, approach from the history and then plan your management. A 26 years old Nalli Para, 26 Nalli Para came with complaints of severe menorrhagia. Now the problem is there, severe menorrhagia and lower abdominal pain since last 6 months. On examination, 14 week size uterus with fundal fibroid is noted. Which of the following is the treatment of choice for this patient? 26 years old right nalli paris we don't know whether she is married whatever is the family status she but definitely sooner or later she will she wants to have kids severe menorrhagia and lower abdominal pain that is that means the fibroid is symptomatic we need to remove it 14 week size more than 12 week size now the point is whether we should go for GnRH or myomectomy, the question arises here. We cannot wait and watch, obviously because she is having severe bleeding and pain. We cannot go for hysterectomy, she is a young patient, nulli paris patient. Now the examiner has not mentioned whether she, was, she is having severe anemia or not. If the question would have told that she is a case of severe anemia, then the answer would be GnRH analogs initially with improvement of the uh, this blood status, hemoglobin status later on surgery. But here it is not mentioned. So our answer straight away is myomectomy. Go for a myomectomy, remove the culprit fibroid and then your patient is well, right? Now with this I finished the approach to a multiple choice question. Now comes your clinical examination. History taking in a case of fibroid uterus. In your uh, UG exam, your MBBS exam or in your PG exam, there is a little bit of difference of investigations management part. Otherwise, the case presentation is the same. So if you get a patient telling you that I am suffering from AUB and you feel that it is a fibroid uterus, it is a generalized history taking and what are the importance of what points? In history taking, normally we start with the personal history, name, age, gender, address, everything. That would remain the same. But these are the questions which can arise from each of your portion of history. Like age, what is the importance of age? Why do we ask age in a case of fibroid uterus? Because with increasing age, the chances of encountering a fibroid increases. As we remember from our history that between 30 to 40 years of age, 30% of the women are having fibroids in their uterus, whether asymptomatic or symptomatic. Then you jump on to menstrual history. What is the importance of menstrual history? Eliciting menstrual history in a gynae case is very, very important. You always ask for the age of Minag. If the patient is menopausal, you ask for the age of menopause also. And if she is not menopausal, you ask for how the periods are there, whether they are regular, irregular, what is the timing, 28 days, 30 days, 35 days, for how many days they last, what is the blood flow, how many pads are soaked, so that you come to know what is the amount of bleeding in this case. So age at Minark, age at Minark is important because in cases of fibroid uterus, we remember the risk factors. Early Minark, late menopause, increase fibroid. Pattern of bleeding, whether it is simple menorrhagia or menometrorrhagia, irregular bleeding or heavy bleeding with dysmenorrhea. Heavy bleeding with dysmenorrhea, mostly it is a submucosal or intramural fibroid indenting on the endometrium. But if she says on and off spotting, it may be a case of infected or necrosed submucous fibroid. Now comes obstetric history. Obstetric history is important. With the changing times, you will find many women who are not like they have not bore a single child. They are childless nulli paris. And so a nulli gravida patient where all the time estrogen was there in the body, hyperestrogenic state may cause fibroid. History of PCOS, looking at the patient you may ask, 
whether it is a personal choice not having a child or there was a history of infertility if there was infertility was the period irregular because pcos there is hyper estrogenic state and there are increased chances of fibroid these are all the leading question that you need to ask and present in front of your examiner because you want to earn marks marks are always earned you want your examiner to ask you these points family history family history is important from our uh, this point of view um if the mother was having fibroid then the chances of fibroid are more history of smoking it is okay just to complete our personal history we ask history of smoking but it is a protective factor and we need need not to highlight it too much now the patient may complain of lump abdomen then you need to ask then for long how long this lump abdomen was being felt is it painful when did she see mostly these they grow slowly slowly the patient does not notice and then on one fine day she notices so on normally they are not painful but they are having dysmenorrhea complaint of frequency of micturition and bowel disturbances why do we want to ask this to know the location of the fibroid any fibroid which is located in the anterior wall will impinge on the urinary bladder and chances of urinary frequency are more similarly a posterior wall or a, a fibroid which is completely covering the pelvis can cause constipation these are the leading points in the history which point toward your diagnosis clinical examination what to notice specifically in clinical examination signs of pelor very much important anemia you need to rule out anemia signs of pelor conjunctiva right nails tongue then bmi very very important body mass index what is the weight of the patient what is the height of the patient if the patient is having high bmi overweight or obese then the chances of having a fibroid are more now upper abdomen examination mostly in all the ug and pg exam we need to conduct a good upper abdomen examination starting from inspection if it is a huge tumor that is more than 12 weeks pregnant uterine size then you will find it above the symphysis pubis so they are visible on inspection a lean and thin patient with a huge tumor it will be visible like that but mostly below the umbilicus on palpation this is the abdomen this is the mass if it is a central fibroid there is a uniform enlargement otherwise it can be lobulated also so the contour may be smooth it may be lobulated if you touch with your fingers it is firm in consistency not soft not hard mobility if you try to elicit the mobility it is like this it is mobile but it is not mobile in this direction because it is arising from the pelvis and the lower margin is not reached right a mass where lower margin is not reached the history taking will end here in case of ug examination but in cases of pg examination you have to perform a pelvic examination upper vaginal examination by manual examination where your two fingers are inside the vagina in the posterior fornix and your hand is on the abdomen then you will have you can palpate the mass in between your both the hands and then classify it as whether it is a fibroid or not and your cervical movements if they are transmitted to the mass then definitely the chances of having a fibroid are more with this i finish off with today's lecture and history taking part also thank you very much and approach to the patient and how to manage and investigate we have already covered in our previous lectures thank you so much